I thought this would be a fun little video to make because it, honestly, the whole class and talent system of Dragonflight is easily the most marquee feature in my eyes. It's the thing I'm most excited about. And I'm looking to like explore the game from a new lens. So I'm looking at these talents and I'm thinking like, oh man, there's some really cool talents out here. Things that would kind of like define the class, make a really interesting play style just around this one talent. And I'd be very interested in hearing what your thoughts are because obviously, you know, I play the way the game, the way I do, and I often miss things. Uh, but I'd love to hear your thoughts, especially as somebody playing other roles that doesn't necessarily need to be a tank. Uh, and I'd love to hear maybe like even like a couple questions answered from you. Like one, what do you think? What spec has been altered the most by uh, the talent addition, like from the old one to the new one? Uh, what what class do you think like has or what spec has the most interesting overall talent pool like not just i like this one build but that's it and then uh, number three most importantly i'd love to hear some thoughts on this what do you think is the most interesting talent in the game the whole game anything you've checked taken a look at i'd love to hear your thoughts on that because i'm always looking for interesting new play styles new talents things that i could do even even if it's just for like leveling challenge or something new concepts especially maybe even mixing with like pvp talents or something like that so I was looking for more info on this. I thought it'd be a nice little video to get some uh, discussion going. So I will tell you my uh, my thoughts on all this. And, uh, you know, if you watch the video when they announced the most recent, which was still like a, two months ago now, Blood Death Knight talent changes, and we got Umbilicus Eternus. Now, if you haven't been following the channel since Legion, well, you missed a lot. This has been one of my favorite uh, things ever for Blood DK. If it was a talent or if it was a legendary in Shadowlands, I would have been using that no matter what. Uh, it's part of the channel. I mean, I just absolutely adore it. It's so awesome that it's actually back now as well. And it's just like full circle. It's come. So this is easily my favorite talent in the game. Like it's not even close. There's nothing even remotely on the same page as this. And it's not even really that strong right now. It has really cool sy synergy with Mythic Plus. So I've always liked that about it. And it actually has some like good skill potential there for playing uh, in AOE situations, especially in potentially dangerous Mythic Plus situations. But Blood Decay also has some really cool stuff with this Iron Heart. Blood Shield's duration has increased and 20% more damage. And that synergizes really well with Gloom Ward and also really good with the Mastery buff from the Dreadlord. So that's going to be gone soon. I would definitely recommend checking that out. Even if you feel like you don't need it, you'll be surprised at how crazy it is to just have pretty much like 80% uptime on your Absorb from your Mastery. It's pretty fun. I think it's really unique. And uh, I actually, uh, you know, played as Holy Pally a bunch with the Blood DKs who didn't have it. And, you know, they did fine, I'm sure. But it's like, man, that's just such a unique playstyle, And it's really just going to be gone. I mean, it's not really even that much of a play style, but it's just like pretty crazy to see that big of a, you know, shields all over and over and over again when you have the buff from uh, the seasonal effects there. So let's go through some of the other ones that I saw because uh, there's some very interesting stuff that I've been uh, taking a look at. Now, we haven't played Guardian Druid on the channel yet, but I do hope to do that soon, maybe this week. And they have one of the most interesting play styles I've ever seen, and that is this Moonfire thing. Now, they did like nerf it or like, reorganize it or something like that i don't fully understand what actually happened here but i guess it's going to be a lot harder to have right now during the pre-patch so i'm a little bit less excited about playing it but while we wait i found a really really interesting little thing i think it's like almost like a little diamond in the rough here because i brought it up and it didn't seem like a lot of people understood what was going on here so we took a look at this talent which is really low you know do you get this really early it says regrowth and frenzied regeneration healing is increased by 20 percent on your yourself and frenzied regen has one additional charge so you look at this as like oh it's a big buff to frenzied regen and that's great it's a cool talent for that but then then i'm thinking like what what's the regrowth what why is regrowth part of that talent and i'm liking to think that you know there wouldn't be a reason for that to be on there that early in the talent tree if it didn't have some deep synergies to it so i brought it up in my discord and, uh, you know, some people were like, well, you know, uh, maybe it's a bug or why is it on there? I don't know. Uh, or how about uh, it's there because you could shift out and heal. Right. But it's only on yourself. So you can't really do that. It's not really that valuable. Oh, you could put it on yourself before combat. Well, then somebody who actually plays Druid spied the fact that it has some really cool synergies with some other talents. So we have innate resolve. Then down here, we have protector of the pack stores 10 percent of your damage, which, uh, yeah, Bear does a good amount of that now. Uh, up to uh, blah, blah, blah. And your next regrowth consumes all that stored damage to increase the healing of regrowth. So that's still, uh, you know, a spell that is is pretty powerful on its own now, but it can't be used in bear form, right? 
Well, then there's this talent here, Dream of Scenarius. When you take non-periodic damage, you have a chance equal to your critical strike to cause your next regrowth to be instant, free, and castable in all forms. Once every 20 seconds. Love that. Absolutely adore that. To be honest, these three things together, I will definitely be trying out. Is it needed? No, probably not. It's probably not even that interesting, but I'll tell you, it just sounds really, really, really cool for Guardian Druid to have a pretty big, presumably very big uh, on-demand self-heal every 20 seconds. So yeah, that's uh, that kind of thing I quite like. You know, they've always had things like uh, Renewal, but it's been a longer cooldown and, uh, you know, Frenzied Regen isn't what it used to be. So I really like the concept there. Now, Protection Warrior is also something I plan on playing, but I uh, haven't gotten it fully leveled yet. Uh, but the reason I'm very interested in it is because there's a lot of things like this. Focused Vigor, increased strength and armor by 5% and your critical strike by 1%. Enduring Alacrity, increases stamina and armor by 5% and your haste by 1%. A lot of these things that are just kind of like armor buffs, right? Well, then you see Armored to the Teeth, gain strength equal to 2% of your armor. Armor increased by 20%. You know what I mean? Like these things seem like they're just, honestly, when I saw this the first time, I was like, how is this ever going to be balanced? Uh, and maybe maybe it's not. So uh, yeah, that kind of, I don't know. I just really like that concept of these like really strong passive things all kind of synergizing together. And uh, even though I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the way Prot Warrior might play, I do think that this kind of thing might really attract me. So I'm going to level a warrior and hopefully we'll get to take a look at that before the pre-patch is over as well and i just got to get the actual talent change or the class changes no the leveling changes in so we can do that as well because i'm really not trying to level through shadowlands now this one is interesting if you saw me play holy pally recently you'll know there's a ton of stuff i love i could easily tell you my favorite combination right now is beacon of virtue and glimmer of light I, plus divine toll these three talents right here seem incredibly powerful together and that's because they are uh, Divine Toll we still have from the Kyrian uh, situation, but soon it'll be a talent, and it's going to pretty much work the exact same way it does now, minus a little bit longer of a cooldown, but you're going to be able to do exactly what I've been doing all expansion. Put up Beacon of Virtue and full heal all the players in the group by using Divine Toll combination with Glimmer. Uh, as of right now, it seems incredibly powerful. In the past, it was like one of those things where you'd use it, and it wouldn't necessarily heal everyone, but we'd kind of make like a big meme out of it like oh it's look it's full he full health everybody's full health and uh, now it's just true <laughs> every single time you use it it does tons of healing and especially right now with the crit buff from the dreadlords it's unreal it is a get out of jail free card every minute or less now also quite interested in blessing of summer i i really like the concept of buffs uh paladin in general it used to be a buff a magnet uh unfortunately that doesn't seem to ever be coming back i really you know, I keep waiting for it. They bring Mark of the Wild back for Druid. They brought buffs back in general. Still no blessings. So maybe someday I really wish that they could change this talent to be Blessing of Kings, Might, Wisdom, and something. You know what I mean? Um, but now it's Blessing of Summer still, which is still great. I love it. And I actually love the art for it too. So we're probably going to check this out at some point. But my favorite actual interaction is going to be uh, anything that actually makes the spec more active. And that is this right here. Flash of Light, Holy Light, and Judgment Critical Strikes reset the cooldown on Hammer of Wrath and make it usable on any target. And again, this might be being propped up by the Dreadlord buff right now, but this happens a lot. And it's really fun when it does because you're getting another free uh, damage spell that can also double dip into healing with the Holy Power generation the spell gives. So my question though is, I haven't actually tried it. I mean, it's not like I can't try this myself. But, you know, you don't actually have to take Hammer of Wrath, right? Like, it's not a mandatory talent. It's the uh, Rhett mandatory talent. Land Hands is the holy one. So what actually happens if you take a talent that buffs something else that you don't have? Does it do nothing? I've never tried it. Uh, I don't know if anybody has ever tried something like this before, maybe on other classes. But to be honest, like, that's kind of strange that... I don't know. That's just how it works, I guess. But it's such a deep talent. And this is such an early talent that it makes me think like it probably just does nothing because you're a fool for taking it. And then we come to Discipline, which is actually probably the most improved spec over the last hours. I mean, it's actually crazy. They just got massive buffs, uh, really crazy buffs, to be honest. And uh, I can't, you know, I don't really play the spec, so I can't really tell you how, you know, powerful any of that stuff is. 
but Discipline looks like it is the, the healer that has improved the most in this expansion because they have uh, always kind of struggled. They have always had an identity crisis recently. You see in mop challenge modes and mop in general, they were overpowered, like unbelievably overpowered. And it was simply because they did a lot of damage and nobody else really did. And most importantly, they did a lot of damage while also healing. So, you know, like Holy Pally or Resto Druid back then, they could do some damage, but it would be at the complete cost of healing. Now that has changed, okay? In the years to come, they don't really do any, or the years like just that just passed, they don't really do any damage at all. It's like actually kind of sad. <laughs> they they got nerfed to a point where they're basically just like a really weak and kind of like misguided healer to the point where they have some niche because they're always putting absorbs up. And that's kind of like another thing, like the concept of an absorb is typically more valuable than the concept of a heal uh, and especially raiding content. Um, but now it's, you know, kind of blurred that line in five ants too, but this is some of my favorite stuff that's in the entire game. And I'm not even gonna lie to you when I say this, I don't even play this class, but I will absolutely be leveling a priest in general to play discipline. And here's why this used to be a PVP talent. And now it is an actual talent. Now I'm not sure if it's in the game yet, because I'm looking at the beta talent tree, but it will be at some point. And this is insane to me. The damage of your smite and penance is increased by 8% and your penance increases or decreases your target movement speed by 25%. Okay, so that is a nice little piece of utility and a really nice damage buff that stacks times two. So a 50% slow and a 16% buff to your core spells that are already part of your healing rotation and doing a lot of damage. Then we have this, Wheel and Woe. Your Penance Bolts increase the damage of your next Smite by 12%, or the Absorb of your next Shield stacks up to 7 times. So you can do like this crazy full DPS rotation for probably, you know, 15-20 seconds, and then come right back and do some massive absorbing. And it's just like all really kind of back and forth, like heal, DPS, DPS, heal. I love the concept of it. We also have one of my favorite artifact abilities in the entire game. In fact, if you did not watch this channel on Legion, you would know it was literally the only reason I even played Discipline. Light's Wrath invokes the Light's Wrath, dealing uh, radiant damage to the target and increases by 6% per ally affected by your atonement. And then we have Light's Wrath deals an additional 2% damage per ally affected by atonement, stacking twice and reduces the cast time of Light's Wrath by one second and increases its critical strike chance by 15%. Smite deals 40% additional damage after casting Light's Wrath. So how about all of these together, man? I cannot even imagine it. You're gonna be doing insane DPS and that's how it was in Legion 2. Legion, actually, I remember there was almost like, I don't even know if it was like a bug or what, but the artifact ability would just like randomly get really, really, really strong. And I still don't understand how or why that happened. But when that happened, it was like you were top DPS. Like you would literally be bursting higher than actual ma uh, DPSs, mages and stuff, you know. Uh, but pretty much every single one of these things are just amazing. I think they do have the best actual talent tree, uh, which is saying something because they don't have an interrupt, which a lot of people uh, take note of. But to me, honestly, dude, I'd rather take a uh, power infusion for, you know, uh, I think it's more powerful than having an actual interrupt and they do have a fear. So yeah, I mean, I don't know, man, this is just so, such a good talent tree. I don't even really like the spec or the class to be honest. And the talent tree is just so attractive to me that I just, I got a level one. I like, I'm going to level one just to be taking a look at this talent tree, the mind bender situation as well. I have so many really cool talents for discipline. So I do think for me, my favorite talent in general is of course, Umbilicus Eternus. There's nothing even really close. I do like some of the prop ones, uh, you know, prop pally too, uh, which we didn't actually look at, but prop pally has one of the coolest ones as well, uh, which I, I can't remember the name of, but man, is it awesome? Uh, it's something about tear, tears and forza, your Avenger shields and beauty of holy fire, causing it to uh, basically do a lot of really cool animations when you use the spell, which is what, I love the most in this game at this point. Um, so that's, uh, you know, those are definitely the top two. Uh, in terms of like what class benefited the most from the talents, honestly, I might say it's Blood Decay because Blood Decay was in a really, really, really powerful position. Like they had the, I, I, I'd argue that they had the best set bonus coming uh, from season three into four. And, uh, you know, their Covenant situation was very good too. The Legendary synergized really well with it. 
So they lost the set bonus, right? Like they didn't move it forward into the talents, which I'm grateful for, honestly. Uh, but that's a really big power loss, right? Like they actually, like they went from the best to the worst in terms of the power they have on their character now, right? And somehow I still, I mean, personally, I, I feel this way. Maybe others don't. I think they're actually better than they were. And that's because they have such powerful talents that are so versatile now for five-man situations. All of these things that kind of funnel a little bit extra damage, but also a little bit extra healing. And then all of it comes down to Umbilicus. And something I forgot to mention too, Red Thirst. There is the Gorfiend's Legendary still in the game, which is actually right out of Legion as well. That is going to give you dramatically more uptime on Red Thirst. Something like that, man, is going to be insane. Even right now, you can build full haste. Put that legendary on and you were going to have basically back to back you will have vamp blood probably like i'd say probably like 70 maybe more percent of the combat and it'll just be red thirst getting you vamp blood getting you umbilicus over and over and over again you'll just never actually take damage so this kind of stuff is so freaking cool to me obviously it's not going to come with us into dragonflight but that has got to be the talent tree that i think has changed and impacted the class the most but which do i think is the most unique all together and it is priest and it is not even just discipline uh, to be honest i don't really like holies at all but shadows also looks awesome and one of my favorite things about it is it's just renew being like a spell that you could have again and uh, yeah i'm going to be doing a leveling challenge as shadow uh hopefully in this pre-patch we'll see it the next one i'm going to do is shaman uh, shaman also has a really good talent tree but to be honest i think the kit besides the talent tree is just outstanding as well so i can't even really attribute the talent tree to that much about why i love it but yeah my plans are to do shaman and then pal or priest and then we'll see you know what happens after that with shadowlands or with dragonflight launching so i'd really like to hear your guys' thoughts on this i hope it'll be a fun little discussion and uh, either way we'll be back with mythic plus coming this week but just a nice little interlude thinking about how this game has really transformed all with a single patch